Hi guys, welcome to my channel, The Narcissist Guide. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that you're having a good day. And for those of you who are going through healing, I hope that you're staying strong. In today's episode, I would like to talk about the signs of a narcissistic mother. And they are not easy to spot. 15 traits of a narcissistic mother. Now, a narcissistic mother is a parent with narcissistic personality disorder who is psychologically constructed to garner attention, be it from charisma, beauty, smarts or finance. In this definition there exists a catch. When the world views a charismatic attention-seeking woman and chances are she will be in a powerful position for all to admire such as a lawyer, judge, head of the PTO etc. The family witnesses the other unpolished side of the coin. Children of narcissistic parents go through their lives feeling confused and lost and in search of love they never received from home. They expect their mothers to nurture and support them, but when they are dealing with narcissistic mothers, they aren't given the love and support that healthy parents provide. The signs of a narcissistic mother are not always easy to spot, but once known, there are ways to deal with the situation. Now here are 15 traits of a narcissistic mother. Do you suspect you have a narcissistic mother? The signs are not always easy to spot, and some well-intentioned. But misguided parenting can be misconstrued as narcissistic. Narcissistic mothers share these traits. They like to keep control. They like to have complete control over all aspects of their children's lives, from friends to music to clothes and habits. Manipulation is their game, and they play it very well. They use guilt trips through emotional blackmail to make their kids dance to their music. An example, you need to take computer science if you are going to amount to something, not waste your time in that art class. They divert the conversation to center on themselves. Their children may be trying to communicate a problem at school or an issue with friends, but their mothers will take control and change the direction of the conversation to focus on themselves. The child may start talking about how sad they are because their friend is moving away and suddenly find themselves off topic. She would say like, Mackenzie is fine, but when I was your age, I had a dozen of friends and my best friend and I roomed together in college. They get angry when things don't go their way. They lose temper quite easily and they always throw the blame at their children and others instead of acknowledging that they may be the problem. Their children and spouses tend to tiptoe around certain subjects in fear of releasing the dragon's wrath. For example, they would say, that check never arrived. You didn't put it in the mailbox, did you? They place blame, never shoulder it. Ironically, they care what people think about them. They go out of their way to make themselves look good in public at the expense of their children and spouses. Before the public outing, the family will hear don't you dare forget to say please and thank you to my boss. Fix your hair, it's a rat's nest. Once out with her boss, my Jimmy received the presidential medal. I'm so glad I made him do those sit-ups every day and pushed him all the way. She turns her child's victory into hers so that she will look good. It's all about them. Narcissists are self-centered and they feel the entire world should revolve around them. The moment they come home in the door, they expect everyone to come running. They feel they are the most important member of the family instead of being one of the team. I'm home. Someone help me with these bags. I am so tired. I worked such a long day. I, I, I. They forget to ask anyone else about their day. They carry grudges. This last for a long time. If someone slights them or doesn't do what they think should be done or chooses a different lifestyle choice, they harbor the resentment for a very long time. The recipient will receive the cold shoulder or find themselves disinherited for a slight that happened years ago that anyone else would have forgiven and forgotten. Well, I picked Frances to inherit my business because she never abandoned her mother for four years. But mom, I was in the army. They use love to reward and punish. Narcissistic mothers know that the most powerful weapon over their children is their love. 
they don't often part with it and when their children receive it it's usually in full public view to make them look good however they withdraw their affection as punishment for when their kids fall short which in their eyes is often the case you are my favorite child now they would say they treat others as their servants the child of a narcissistic mother will often act as a personal slave in hopes of catching some affection get me a glass of water and grab those grapes while you're at it put a pot on for the spaghetti the list becomes endless and leaves the child feeling like cinderella they are in competition with their children the boundaries between child and parent become blurred this can happen with the narcissistic mother who feel their beauty and sexuality are being challenged by their daughters. You're going to a school dance. Well, I'm going to a real dance at a nightclub. They find constant fault in their children and compare them with the other perfect kids. Their unreasonable expectations set the bar too high for any child. They would say like, can't you be more like John? He always says please and thank you and holds the door for me. Or Ellie gets straight A's, is on the honor roll and is captain of the cheer squad. Why can't you be like her? Chances are if John or Ellie were their children, they wouldn't be good enough either. Their children live in an emotionless void. Children raised by narcissistic parents grow up missing the nurturing love they should have received. They feel little or no emotional attachment or closeness to their parent, only confusion. The years of manipulation takes their toll. Narcissistic mothers lack empathy because they are so super focused on themselves. They are unable to sympathize with their children or their children's plights. They are blind when it comes to seeing situations from their children's viewpoint. I see a D on your report card. A D is unacceptable. I don't care what you have to say. They have low self-esteem. Their grandiose supermom act is an empty facade hiding the fact that they suffer from low self-esteem. Though they won't let the world see them crumble, their children see the other side and often have to pick up the pieces and deal with their bouts of depression. They never want to let you go. All parents know their kids will grow up and leave the nest. It may be painful, but they can accept this fact of life. However, a narcissistic mother will hold on to her child as long as possible, even into adulthood, to maintain control. She will use every tactic in the book to make them feel dependent on her. You can't leave me, you need me. The truth is that narcissistic moms need their children and their full attention. How their children are affected. Children of narcissistic mothers often deal with a roller coaster of childhood emotions. Sapped of a carefree youth, they spend their time trying to please or appease their mothers, sometimes walking on eggshells so as not to invoke anger from the one person who should be providing them with unconditional love and boosting their self-confidence. Instead, their highly judgmental parent pokes at all their faults, criticizes their choices and manipulates their childhood to suit their own needs. They will be accused of being ungrateful. They will be told, it's my way or the highway. They will feel they aren't enough and for narcissistic mothers, they never will be. These children will spend the rest of their lives desperate for a love they never received, an approval that didn't happen. Some will turn to therapy for help, others will unwittingly seek our narcissistic parents subconsciously feeling that if they can fix that relationship, they will be able to fix the one with their mothers, and still others may become narcissistic parents themselves continuing the cycle breaking free from a narcissistic mom if you feel that you are dealing with a narcissistic parent you can learn ways to cope if you visit your friends houses and are able to view other family dynamics chances are you will realize something is wrong that enlightenment can set you free 
avoidance. Choose not to be goaded into situations and caught in uncomfortable encounters by avoiding the perpetrator. It may take offensive actions worthy of a spy master, but it's possible. Maintain your privacy. Living with a narcissistic mother can sap the energy from anyone. Maintain a personal space where you can escape the drama and find peace, whether it's your own room or at grandma's house. Seek outside support. Sometimes you need to talk with someone who will actually listen, be it the guidance, counselor, a therapist or a relative. Adults may still find themselves under their mother's influence, but as an adult, you have far more options available. For example, consider getting professional help. Therapy. You may need to talk to a professional. Narcissistic parents can emotionally wreck their children and cause them to unconsciously seek out equally damaging narcissistic parents. Consider getting professional help. Distance. Sometimes the best avoidance is distance. You may find you have to move away to remove yourself from your narcissistic mother's manipulations. It's easier to put down a phone to end a conversation than to walk from a room. Choose not to follow suit. Just because parents act in a certain way doesn't mean you have to do as well. If you see the problem for what it is, a personality disorder, you can choose to break the cycle by not becoming a narcissistic parent. Now figuring out how to protect yourself and flourish with a narcissistic mother can be difficult and therapy can help. Therapy can be a great place to process your feelings surrounding the home life you grew up in, come to terms with your mom's possible mental health issues and learn to not blame yourself for someone else's unhealthy behaviors. If you decide that the right thing for your own well-being is to stop talking to your mother, then don't believe that doing so makes you an awful person. You are doing what you need to do to take care of yourself. You are just someone who's been dealt a rough hand and odds are you are trying to do the best you can with it. So. If you think you are dealing with a narcissistic mom, or if you had one growing up, definitely consider going to a therapist for help. Aside from learning how to better deal with your mom, therapy can help you uncover all the damage she likely done over the years. Now this is the subject that I wanted to talk to you about today guys. I hope that it was an interesting subject. If it was, please subscribe to my channel, The Narcissist Guide on YouTube. Thank you so very much for listening and tuning in today. And see you next time.